Have you ever heard of the book Sleeping Beauty? This is not it. This is Sleeping Ugly by Jane Yolen. Pictures by Diane Stanley. And she's sleeping, isn't she? Here we see a beautiful princess. Princess Mizzarella was a beautiful princess. If you counted her eyes and nose and mouth and all the way down to her toes. She doesn't look very happy though. But inside, where it was hard to see, she was the meanest, wickedest, and the most worthless princess around. She liked stepping on dogs. Oh, she kicked kittens. Oh, she threw pies in the cook's face. And she never, not even once, said thank you or please. And besides, she told lies. Oh, in that very same kingdom, in the middle of the woods, lived a poor orphan named Plain Jane. She certainly was. Her hair was short and turned down. Her nose was long and turned up. And even if they had been the other way round, she would not have been a great beauty. But she loved animals, and she was always kind to strange old ladies. One day, Princess Mezzarella rode out of the palace in a huff. A huff is not a kind of carriage. It is a kind of temper tantrum, her usual kind. She rode and rode and rode, looking beautiful as always, even with her hair in tangles. She rode right into the middle of the woods and was soon lost. She got off of her horse and slapped it sharply for losing the way. The horse said nothing but ran right back home. It had known the way back all the time, but it was not about to tell Miserella. So there was the princess lost in the wood. It made her look even prettier. Suddenly, Princess Miserella tripped over a little old lady asleep under a tree. Now, little old ladies who sleep under trees deep in the dark wood are almost always fairies in disguise. Miserella guessed who the little old lady was, but she did not care. She kicked the old lady in the bottoms of her feet. Get up and take me home, said the princess. I could see her little magic wand there. And she's holding her feet. Her feet must be very sore. Look, she's even holding that foot to the side there. So the old lady got to her feet very slowly, for the bottoms now hurt. She took Miserella by the hand. She used only her thumb and second finger to hold Miserella's hand. Fairies know quite a bit about that kind of princess. So you can see her hand just holding a little bit of the princess's hand. They walked and walked even deeper into the wood where they found a little house. It was plain Jane's house. It was dreary. The floor sank. The walls stank. The roof leaked even on sunny days. But Jane made the best of it. She planted roses around the door. And little animals and birds made their home with her. That may be why the floor sank and the walls stank. But no one complained. This is not my home, said Miserella with a sniff. Nor mine, said the fairy. They walked in without knocking, and there was Jane. It is mine, she said. The princess looked at Jane, down and up, up and down. 
Take me home, said Miserella, and as a reward, I will make you my maid. Plain Jane smiled. A thin little smile. It did not improve her looks or the princess's mood. Some reward, said the fairy to herself. Out loud, she said, if you could take us if you could take both of us home, I could probably squeeze out a wish or two. Make it three, said Miserella to the fairy, and I'll get us home. Plain Jane smiled again. The birds began to sing. My home is your home, said Jane. I like your manners, said the fairy. And for that good thought, I'll give you the three wishes to you. Princess Miserella was not pleased. She stamped her foot. Do that again, said the fairy, taking a pined wand from her pocket, and I'll turn your foot into stone. And just to be mean, Miserella stamped her foot again. It turned to stone. There it is, all turned into stone. Plain Jane sighed. My first wish is that you change her foot back. The fairy made a face. I like your manners, but not your taste, she said to Jane. Still a wish is a wish. The fairy moved the wand. The princess shook her foot. It was no longer made of stone. I guess my foot was a, fell asleep for a moment, said Miserella. She really liked to lie. Beside, the princess said, that was a stupid way to wish, waste a wish. The fairy was angry. Do not call someone stupid unless you have been properly introduced, she said, or are a member of the family. Stupid, 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 said Miserella. She hated to be told what to do. Say stupid again, warned the fairy, holding up her wand, and I will make toads come out of your mouth. Stupid, shouted Miserella. As she said it, a great big toad dropped out of her mouth. So stupid is probably not a good word to say. Cute, said Jane, picking up the toad. And I do like toads, but... But, asked the fairy. Miserella did not open her mouth. Toads were among her least favorite animals. But, said Plain Jane, my second wish is that you get rid of the mouth toads. She's lucky it wasn't a mouth elephant, mumbled the fairy. She waved the, the pine wand. Miserella opened her mouth slowly. Nothing came out but her tongue. She pointed it at the fairy. She was sticking her tongue out. Princess Miserella looked miserable. That made her look beautiful, too. I definitely have had enough, she said. I want to go home. She grabbed plain Jane's arm. Gently, gently, said the old fairy, shaking her head. If you are not gentle with magic, none of us will, will go anywhere. You can go where you want, said Miserella, but there is only one place I want to go. To sleep, said the fairy, who is now much too mad to remember to be gentle. She waved her wand so hard she hit the wall of Jane's house. Oh, my, the wall broke, the wand broke, the spell broke, and before Jane could make her third wish, all three of them were asleep. You see them sleeping there? They were out. It was one of those famous hundred-year naps that needs a prince and a kiss to end them. So they slept and slept in the cottage in the woods. They slept through three and a half wars, one plague, six new kings, the invention of the sewing machine, and the discovery of a new continent. I can see their hand and a leg sticking out of the 
opening in the wall there. The cottage was deep in the woods, so very few princes passed by, and none of the ones who did even tried the door. At the end of 100 years, a prince named Jojo, who was the youngest son of a youngest son, and so had no gold or jewels or property to speak of, he came into the woods, and it began to rain. So he stepped into the cottage over the broken wall. He saw three women asleep with spider webs holding them to the floor. See, there's the spider web there. One of them was a beautiful princess. There you can see him looking at the beautiful princess. Being the kind of young man who read fairy tales, Jojo knew just what to do. What do you think he will do? But because he was the youngest son of a youngest son with no gold or jewels or property to speak of, he had never kissed anyone before, except his mother, which didn't count, and his father, who had a beard. Jojo thought he should practice before he tried kissing the princess. He also wondered if she would like marrying a prince with no property or gold or jewels to speak of. Jojo knew with princesses that sort of thing really mattered. So he puckered up his lips and kissed the old fairy on the nose. It was quite pleasant. She smelled slightly of cinnamon. He moved on to Jane. He puckered up his lips and kissed her on the mouth. It was delightful. She smelled of wildflowers. Imagine being asleep a hundred years and still smelling like wildflowers. Mm. He moved on to the beautiful princess. Just then, the fairy in plain Jane woke up. Princess Jojo's kisses had worked. The fairy picked up the pieces of her wand. Jane looked at the prince and remembered the kiss as if it were a dream. I wish he loved me, she said softly to herself. Good wish, said the fairy to herself. She waved the two pieces of the wand gently. Oh, got to get the page right. There we are. Ah, the princess looked at Miserella, who was having a bad dream and enjoying it, even frowning. She was beautiful. But Jojo knew that kind of princess. He had three cousins just like her. Pretty on the outside, ugly within. He remembered the smell of wildflowers and turned back to Jane. I love you, he said. What's your name? So they lived happily ever after in Jane's cottage. The prince fixed the roof and the wall and built a house next door for the old fairy. You can see the moon there. Uh, they used the sleeping princess as a conversation piece when friends came to visit, or sometimes they stood her up, still fast asleep in the hallway, and let her hold coats and hats, but they never let anyone kiss her awake, not even their children, who numbered three. They all look really happy. Ah, yes. Here's her sign that says, do not kiss. Moral of the story, let sleeping princesses lie or lying princesses sleep, whichever seems wisest. The end.